Hello there. I'm Shifu Payne, and last year I made a video taking a look at the lightsaber, looking at the various forms of lightsaber combat, breaking down its advantages and disadvantages, and overall coming to the conclusion that ultimately it may not be the best weapon to actually have in the real world. Especially compared to its real life counterpart of the swords. Yet with such a love for this weapon, with such a reverence for the symbolism and mysticism that surrounds such an object, was I wrong? Was there something I was missing? Is this simply a case of collective magpie-like behaviour, seeing the shiny object and being like, ooh, so interesting, must have? Or am I just being an annoying windbag? Yes, we know that one. Anything else? As that is what we are here to discuss today, as what kind of professional would I be if I didn't admit when I may have been wrong at times? So let us allow the Force to guide this video's actions as we take another look at the lightsaber and see, well, did I miss something? Now before we proceed, there is the question that we must of course answer. Why should I be the one to tear down something which people love so much? And not just simply acknowledge that people like something, even though I may not, and that that's okay. Well then for one thing, I wouldn't have a YouTube video out of it, but, but for another thing, I saw such videos as the Hacksmith putting together their own version of the Proto Saber, and I came to the realisation there's we're very close to having this sort of technology here in our world. And so when we do have this sort of weapon in the real world, we need to know how to properly use it so that people don't accidentally hurt themselves. Plus, we get to learn more about sword combat, and with that knowledge comes power. <laughs> this is about what we're all here for at the end of the day. So before we go too much further, let's go over some of the points that we talked about last time when it comes to why they are such a terrible weapon. So the main reason why I said that lightsabers are so terrible a weapon, or anything really similar to them, is just simply the fact that you can't touch the blade. And it's so simple an idea, and yeah, kind of intrinsic, in that, yeah, well it's like a sword, and with swords you can't touch the blade either, so what are you complaining about? Well with the swords, the thing is, that you can touch the blade with it, or you have the flexibility to. Like, hold on to the flat of the blade to say, to defend against an attack. And that gives you more balance to then you know, redirect an attack. But you can't do that with this, because if you, you know, you touch the blade of a lightsaber, I'm rambling. And the reason why that is so terrible is because, it's, is because that becomes such a danger to the wielder as much as it becomes a danger to your opponent. Even doing something as simple as just pointing the handle in the wrong direction can cause someone to, you know, stab themselves. And doing things such as flourishing or adding in fantasy moves like you would see in the prequels could create that problem of accidentally hitting yourself and, you know, injuring yourself, which is not really the best of things. But when it comes to things such as the double-bladed lightsaber, you know, those sorts of variants, it becomes a greater problem in that because you only have so much reap, uh, so much uh, grip, so much room to grip, and you can only have so much, not only reach, but also, again, flexibility in technique. You have some, but not as much as you would have with something such as the bow staff. Now, of course, there is always the potential that I am just bitching and moaning for no real reason. So let's look at some examples of the, from the real world to see what we're talking about, what the advantages are, what the drawbacks are, and we'll go from there. Let's start with this video, showing a duel slash showcase for a saber fighting school from a fencing world championship held in 2015. So there will be more showy, flamboyant displays drawing in the crowd, as we have one guy with a double bladed saber, while the other has the cross guarded saber. Both have design wise their own advantages and disadvantages. The cross guard, for example, has its own set of defensive benefits and protection. But that is lessened by the fact that it is also a laser. This is more of a problem with the design than ability, but why not make the cross guard out of metal? Preferably one that is lightsaber proof. You would have the same defensive benefits with less risk. But that's neither here nor there for now. Let's discuss how the guy is holding the double bladed saber. Now for the most part, the guy with the double blade, he has it he has his grip like this, which, while fine at all and does allow for some range of flexibility. If he just flipped one of his hands around, like this, to grip it, same way you would grip a spear, then suddenly, 
whole range of motion has just opened up. So, but more often than not, it goes like this, which, again, is fine, but just lacking, you know? Let's give a brief overview. Generally, the action is what you would expect, if you're familiar with the prequels, an emphasis on tapping swords and being fancy, instead of effective with combat strategy. Why just take the first strike? Jumping into an attack is a poor idea. I mean, for one thing, your opponent just easily has the potential when you're jumping into the attack to, you know, back away to create more distance and then kind of scupper. But for another thing, your defensive ability is also lacking. And so how easy is it then for your opponent to just stab you and then be done with it? So jumping into the first attack, not a good idea, especially with an object such as this, where it can just burn you with a love tap. There were also several points in the fight where either one or both do not maintain having their opponent in sight. If their opponent was paying attention, they'd be completely exposed to attack. Like here, where Mr. Kai Wannabe basically dips into the corner. Instead of taking advantage, old double blade aggressor over here just spins his blade. This is better where the guy spins to adjust his footwork, covers his back to attack, and is gaining distance. But since he's using a fucking laser sword instead of a regular sword, he's just as likely to slice himself in half, pulling that kind of stunt, seeing as how physics and the laws of motion are still a thing. Not to mention that the several moments where they aim their attacks at the blades instead of their actual opponent, something Mr. Doublebladed is more guilty of than Poundland Kylo Ren. <coughs> Oh sure! Tuck the laser sword under your arm! No risk of injury there! Jesus Christ! I get that this is just a demonstration or a show and so it's not conducive to an actual duel or anything like that but it just shows you that people who train to use these weapons here in our world without the force or without any weird squicky physics stuff or anything that films allow you to do that these people can just easily dish out the problems of lightsabers far easier and far more clearly than I ever could. And before anyone says anything like about the force or anything like that, because I know that argument's gonna come up, A. That's not how the force works. B. We don't have the force. We are not in a film universe where such rules apply to us. If you think that we have the force, then clearly you need to seek mental help, and clearly I am not the right person for that. And C, even if we did have the force, that does not mean that the laws of physics suddenly stop working, alright? Such things as the laws of motion and the laws of gravity still apply. Just because we have aeroplanes does not mean that gravity has stopped existing. Not to mention that because this is a demonstration slash show and not a real duel, they miss key times to end the fight. Take when old Ben over here over twists his wrist. It would take no effort for Jedi Maul over here to disarm him and end the fight. Not to even mentioning the times I've already mentioned where they both lose brain cells. And then this guy doesn't have to even change stances as Mr. Green and Blue strikes the same spot three times. Is it this easy to impress a crowd at a fencing world championship, no less? People are so easily impressed with the shiny objects that they can overlook the shit-faced show they're watching. Well, while you're all having a boner for the John Williams score and the sound effects, I'm commenting that these guys are making Ray look competent. Oh, I stand corrected. Green and blue has switched his grip while having his back to his opponent. In fact, both of them do. Oh, well now our defending Sif has jumped into the fight. Dude, have you not been paying attention? Well, as they switch weapons, we get to see that clearly one of these guys is the better fighter than the other. He's got a low stance. Blocks attacks, although with the double blade he's as likely to chop off his own leg as he is to defend himself, pulling that kind of stunt. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What, was he trying to hit a fly? Did he have double vision? I know I do. Look at this, he's just tapping the blade, not actually trying to strike. What did he think he was doing? This is like seeing a five-year-old in the park playing with a stick, but at least he blocks as he turns, while also overextending and leaving his side wide open. You remember what weapon you're dueling with, right? Well, that overextending caught up with him as the Kylo Ren fangirl strikes straight through the gullet, winning this little show. See, the problem throughout this fight seems to be, or through this demonstration, seems to be less in the actual weapon itself, and more the improper use and improper strategy of the weapon. See, the problem lies in it's that mindset, that prequel-style choreography, where it's all that over-flourishing, over stylization and then you lose the actual technique and the actual strategy that comes in with swordplay. See, doing things that are then as simple as maintaining guard and maintaining defense, while also having in those feints and those small motions. And doing such small things, minute things as that, and maintaining your stance work as well. Those things get lost in the shuffle. 
and instead you come away with uh, these over swings and these big movements which while looking nice does kind of detract after a while now let's compare positively with another example bearing in mind this is a video slash short film that was made with the intention of showing realism and grounded source work as well as to dispel some misconceptions and hollywood lies that filter into the conversation as just source work overall so at least they had the correct intentions. Does that transition to adequate sword work? The idea is that these are just laser swords. No force powers or spiritual what's it's just skill and execution. Plus a magical medical device that brings people back to life. No biggie. And for the most part this video works. There's adequate spacing. Not too close as after all we're talking about an instant kill object from a love tap. But there is an early point where the student holds the blade close to the face. And this is just poor safety work even with a regular sword. Because imagine if that was a real sword and you were, you had it pointed at your face, got hit, boom, hits you in the face, edge first, boom, you're hit. And you probably get some scarring there, but not like a sexy Hayden Christensen scar there, no. You probably have half your face gone. I also couldn't help but laugh that when the guy starts flourishing a weapon and is instantly killed by his instructor, that guy had a look of seeing that one too many times. You and me both, brother. I swear, if this guy had gone into a verse grip, I would have laughed even harder. But another thing as well is that they would constantly be this. I mean, I get that this is a stance and like kendo and things, but I never got this personally. I never understood this because you are able to get away with this with adequate spacing, with adequate space between you and your opponent, you're able to get away with this, but the problem is that you that you're not blocking anything, that you're not defending anything because it's up here. And I don't care what your reaction time is, what your reaction time and reaction speed is, your sword's not blocking it, not defending anything while it's up here. You can tell overall that thought went into spacing, stance work and maintaining guard, not to mention intricate and minute techniques, grip shift, stance changes, all making for the subtle play by play. You see, in an actual sword fight, if you overextend, wind up for a strike, your opponent is just going to see it coming and either block, evade, or straight up just stab you. So you need to be subtle in your approach while maintaining guard. As over flourishing, winding up for the big strikes, going all acrobatic, it works for a performance, a demonstration, a film, a form, but not for a real fight where there is risk of death. See, in comparing these two different showcases of what you can do with this sort of weapon, it becomes more clear that the problem lies less in skill and execution, although that is a symptom, especially in the bad ones. The main thing is where you draw the inspiration from and what your mindset and perspective is going into learning with this type of weapon. Now, make no mistake, I am a fan of Star Wars as well. I said Star Wars, as much as I love martial arts movies. But in both cases, the problem is the same. That just because something is seen on film, it does not mean that it's conducive to an actual situation. There are things to learn of from film. Lessons and morality plays, characters and stories we carry in our hearts for entire lives. But without application, without putting in the hard work to understand and practice those lessons or teachings, we waste our time and practically learn nothing. It's like watching an episode of Hell's Kitchen and then thinking that you can open up a Michelin-style restaurant. The evidence is clear. One put in the work, the other did not. Obviously, there is something to lightsabers. Something more than just an emotional or nostalgic connection. Or else the idea would not permeate all of science fiction. But if these weapons are indeed becoming more and more real, we need to remember that hard work and dedication pay off in the long run, more so than flourishing, and shiny things. It is hard work and dedication which bears the sweetest fruit. Thank you for watching this week's video. It's in the comments. Let me know what your take is on all of this. Am I just rambling for the sake of rambling? Am I just being pedantic? How close do you think we are to having actual lightsabers? And which style of lightsaber combat do you prefer from the movies? Do you prefer more the flourishy, technical, acrobatic prequels? Or more bare bones style of the original trilogy? Or do you prefer the more baseball battle? version in the sequel trilogy. I mean, that has to be someone, right? And until next time, everyone, peace be with you.